Get to Old Navy's Best of Summer Sale now for the best summer styles at the best prices. Get $2 flip-flops, $4 tanks, $6 tees, and $8 dresses and shorts for the whole family. Summer styles are just two, four, six, and eight bucks. $2 flip-flops, $4 tanks, $6 tees, and $8 dresses and shorts. Can't wait to wear it? Buy online and pick up in-store for free. End soon at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid 610 to 618. Excludes gift cards. Today only and two-day only deals. Store clearance, register lane items, and jewelry. said before this is the metal hammer of doom and i am your host the mandated reporter and frankly i'm mortified mr mark rattledge and tonight is the night that we review the new sworn enemy game changer which came out earlier this year sworn enemy of course is an american metalcore band from new york city queens new york to be specific uh, the place where Spider-Man's from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering. Yeah. <laughs> uh, What's up, Queens? <laughs> uh, of course, that voice you hear coming off the handball courts. He put on his shit kickers. He's ready to kick some shit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Jesse Starcher. How do you do, sir? Oh, my goodness. Mark Radlich, good to be back here. I'm going to be talking some New York hardcore. Do you want more? That's right. We don't pronounce our ahs. That's right, buddy. That <laughs> is right. Um, so, how much sworn enemy have you heard in the past? None. Zero. Ter- Zilch. Terrific. Zippo. Want a, want a long conversation about the history? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm afraid I'm going to fail you there, sir. Uh, so, well, I, uh, I, I've been listening to this band for a long time, obviously. Um, you know, I followed them back when I lived in New York. I'm, I'm not in any of the videos. <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I, never, I never made it to the handball court that day. Well, then, damn it. Um, but for the period of time that I was going to, like, indie hardcore shows and whatnot, I've definitely seen this band play before. Um, I've enjoyed their previous stuff. I'm excited to share with the world their new album and talk about it. So let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, buddy. I'm I'm all right with some hardcore uh some hardcore beats here. So, you know, it, it's been a while. What's the last time? It's been a while. What's the last time that we listened to <laughs> we had a hardcore band uh on the Metal Hammer of Doom? Def- I know there was one recently. I've, I've definitely been meaning to do more of it. Like and I put some sometimes I put stuff on the schedule and then I have to take it off because you know, like, you know, Metallica has a new album out. I was like, "Well, sorry, Madball." Um <laughs> But, uh, you know, we did a band from Long Island, Straight From The Path. They were a metalcore band. Oh, I remember that. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, well. So we, we, we sneak some in every now and then when we can. We've dabbled. We've yeah. dabbled. Well, I can tell you that, you know, I'm excited about this because this was a, this, my friend, was a pleasant surprise. So I can't wait to talk about it. All right. Well, I have an echocardiogram in the morning and I needed to get my CAR-T uh, 
uh, paid for by my insurance company, so I ain't got time to waste tonight. I understand. <laughs> so if we could have the children st- uh, stay in their rooms, do not ask for <laughs> bread and water tonight. <laughs> now you're asking a little too much, sir. The children yeah. shall go hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, if that happens, they will just be at the top of the stairs yelling for me. So <laughs> uh, that we do not want. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're going to zip through these tonight. These songs are like mostly three to four minutes long. So, you know, we don't we don't play the whole song here on the Metal Hammer of Doom, lest we get sued. Um, <laughs> the, and, the, the boy, do we know how to violate a copyright law, don't we? Oh, all at once. <laughs> All at once. We violate them all. <laughs> My goodness. All right. Uh, so let's get into the first one. We're going to skip the intro track. Um, you know, it's just not really worth playing. It's only a minute long, and I can't play all of it. So we're going to proceed. As we proceed, we will go ahead and start off with track two. This is Prepare for Payback. Step the fuck back before you get knocked down. Step the fuck back. I'll bring the hammer down. Step the fuck back before you get knocked down. Step the fuck back. Bring the hammer down They used to be a time I can forgive and forget So there's a long gone Prepare for payback Motherfucker, you burned me twice I have a feeling you're pleased, sir. Step the fuck back, Jesse, <laughs> before you get knocked out. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Man. That's what I live for right there. I had a feeling. I had a feeling you'd enjoy that. Yeah, this is some aggressive, I mean, just in your face and, you know, no holds barred hardcore metal here. Throw uh, this on the gym mix. Ah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Walk into the gym wearing nothing but a tank top and nothing else. So, folks, we have <laughs> pretty much put the pedal right down to the floor on this album. And be ready, because I don't think we're letting up. Not, yeah. not you know, it doesn't seem like that's in Sworn Enemy's repertoire. Uh, we, may get a little, we may get a little swerve here in a few, but... Uh, Prepare for payback just sets everything up and lets you understand, oh, hey, by the way, we don't put up with nobody's shit, and we're going to tell you all about it, and here you go. Listen, you don't come for to a Sworn Enemy album, you know, for uh, for art. You're yeah. coming, <laughs> you come for ass-kicking soundtrack music. That's what you come for. That's for throwing the fists and ducking the blows. That's right. So, uh, sworn right off the bat, man. I was out there mowing the lawn to this, and I was like, "I, I you should have seen me." I was just like, "Yeah, step the fuck back, dude! <laughs> Cut the grass!" <laughs> I was having a neighbors are over time. there. <laughs> neighbors are over there looking at you like, "How the hell does this man mow his yard with his knees to his chest every time he's walking down?" <laughs> I don't understand what the hell's why, going on here. Why is he goose stepping? We don't understand. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, dude. I don't blame you. This is this is some uh, this is some good stuff. This is a great start. Yep. This is how this is this is where you put your shit kickers on 
and kick some shit and throw <laughs> throw a spin kick in the mosh pit. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody getting suplexed today <laughs> <laughs> on the handball court, right there. I just don't understand. I still, I'm trying to figure out how a mosh pit just all of a sudden now we're going into grappling. <laughs> okay, and we're we're getting a headlock, and now we're going to suplex this motherfucker. Oh, this guy just did a four fifty off the basketball hoop. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Wait. Oh, boy. That's funny. All right. Let's move on to our next song here. Because the beat don't stop and neither will we. This is Seeds of Hate. I will not submit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things that I want to point out here that m- people who are listening m- obviously aren't going to get a, um, a sense of the tracks uh, on a lot of what we say are jokes and they should yeah. not be taken seriously <laughs> or as some sort of, some sort of hate crime. <laughs> well, oh, sorry, we that's, know. that's not what you were saying. Go ahead. No, no, sir. <laughs> Although that tends to happen. Apparently. Um, the the tracks on this album all kind of blend together. So when one track ends, the next one kind of starts up, and it feels like sometimes it's almost the same song, mm-hmm. except obviously it's not. Uh, and I like that. I think that's uh, that fits very well with this album, in my opinion. Um, so you know, Seeds of Hate again. I, there's not much you could say other than you know, there's not much different from the pedals of the metal shit that we got with our first full track. Um, I will tell you that I've seen a couple dissenters among some of the reviews I was reading. Oh. And yeah, I'll, I'll read this to you. Um, it says, Seeds of Hate displays off-putting new metal whining over enticing groove riffs. Did you hear whining? any... Of, yeah, did you hear any new metal whining at all in that song? Fuck you, I will not submit. Yeah. No, whining is I don't want to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If this was Seeds of Discontent, you know, fuck you, I will not go to bed. That's whining. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, it, there's no, I did not pick up any new metal whining on here. Uh, this guy, I cannot remember who, uh, I did not, I did not cite the source, but you know, this review here that I was reading uh, was giving the producer a hard time. Um, and I don't know if you read this or not, but it's, uh Oh, goodness. I had it right here. What is his name? Rob Flynn uh, from Machine Head uh, produced this album. Okay. So apparently he was giving Rob Flynn a hard time because his hand is all over this album and he doesn't like it. Yeah, well, you know what? Influence. He doesn't like, you know, it doesn't matter what he likes. Rob Flynn will tell him the uh, left freedom ring with the shotgun blast. (laughs) Right in your fucking face. (laughs) That's right, damn it. Uh, but yeah, Seeds of Hate still a good one. I mean, we're we're still doing 
we're still doing pretty good in my book here. Yep. All right, let's keep it moving, moving on. This next one is not a Duran Duran cover, I swear is it. This is <laughs> Coming Undone. <laughs> I wish I could play more of that. I, I had and, to stop it. I, I got the distinct impression, and maybe I'm wrong about this. Maybe I'm misreading the song, but that felt like that almost felt pro suicidal. I I understand where you're coming from there. It's not pro suicidal. I think a lot of it is it's an expression of him trying to deal with what's going on. I I, I believe some of the lyrics. Lead you to believe he's got a gun up against his head, but you know it's all this shit continues to beat him down and, and beat him down, and it feels like everything's falling apart around him. Hence grab, the coming at done. Can you grab the lyrics real quick? I did try. Let me see if I can find them here again. Um, they did not have the new album on dark lyrics because I was actually looking for one of the later songs. So the name of the band is Sworn Enemy. The name of the song is the coming. The band is Sworn Enemy. Sworn. <laughs> no wonder I couldn't find them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so. Sworn Enemy of the Human Waste. All right. Let me take a look. I think they had a, this is one of the actual songs they did a video for, too. Um, All right. So our lyrics, according to. Uh, according to this, let's take a look here. Uh, do we have lyrics for this? Uh, that would be incorrect, sir. Nope, not there. No. Lyrics playlist and Shazam. Show me, show me Shazam. Nope. Can you be Shazam? Can you be? I'm not, I have yet to see that yet. <laughs> um, man, I don't know, dude. I don't know if we're going to be able to find anything. Oh, I'm trying to go back and go back through it again because I remember I actually this this one kind of caught my ear when I was uh, when I was first listening to it because again he's like sometimes you know you'd be better off dead and I'm like it's an interesting message in this song especially since a lot of the heart like you know yeah we, we to the point that we had to that we joked about it how positive hate breed is yep like it's aggressive but positive at the same time. You know, Five Finger Death Punch again can be also very positive uh, when when they want to be. You know, is, you know, alongside being aggressive, and you know, so far I'm not getting the positivity from the sworn enemy. No, there's that is actually one of my notes because there's a song in here that kind of touts positivity. We'll talk about that here in a few, but there is a lot of negativity on this album. A yeah. lot of like, you know, hey, I'm gonna beat your ass. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, you know, I'm gonna punch you in the face. <laughs> mm-hmm. gonna, uh, so it's I'm a lot of. You, I'm gonna beat you at handball. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna suplex you. Um, yeah, I 
I can't find the lyrics, dude. Google has not got anything for lyrics on this. But I, I know exactly what you're talking about. My take on it, though, like I said, was just his expression of how it felt. Like, you know, each day you got to deal with this shit, uh, and it feels like, you know, you have a gun to your head. And and I, I don't take it as pro-suicide. I think it was more along the lines of, you know, hey, you know, we all got shit we got to deal with, and this is my way of expressing what I'm having to deal with, so... It does get – there's a couple other songs on here we'll talk about that are just as dark, I think. Um, they're brutal but dark. So, Indeed. All right. Let's keep going. We're going to – if you're wondering, like, huh, they're doing a little less banter tonight. Like I said, you know, we're not going to belabor these points, and I, I, have, uh, I have things to do tomorrow, so I want to – I don't want to spend two hours on this like I did with fucking Aladdin last night. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I saw that. A little over two hours on Aladdin. Oh, my God. That was, that was the podcast. movie. That was the podcast that never ends, never <laughs> ends, never ends. That was the podcast that never ends. <laughs> uh, the, the main question is, did Winfrey get the last word? That's the only thing I'm worried about. Always. Oh, that's right. Okay. Always and forever. Forever. <laughs> All right. This next one is called Justify. Then we'll make some s'mores. <laughs> what? what? what I don't said? think. No, I know. Uh, no. They, they, they protect the lives. We make the s'mores. That's what I heard. Okay. All right. So yeah, I don't. I'm trying to figure out how s'mores figure into this, you know, political uh, shitstorm of a song. S'mores so, are delicious. I mean, there's no denying that. Uh, so it's the kind hey. of thing I think the government would try to take away from us. Uh, now that I could see, yeah, no, no s'mores for anybody. No abortions uh, or s'mores or marijuana. Oh, uh, Louisiana, that's up next. Be ready. Um, so I do want to say we hit a we hit a spot in this album where I really liked Coming Undone. I really like Justify. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's your typical fuck politician song, which I can get behind, Mark sure. Radlich. I can get behind. Look, sworn enemy are not living lodged and in charge. You know, they they make their money, they go on their tours, but these people are not going home to their mansions in Beverly Hills. I'm not going to give them the usual kind of shit I give a lot of bands for. Like, come on, and, and later on, you'll, I think you'll hear it in another song. Like, we just we got to get together, we got to make a change. It's like, all right, yeah, yeah they're there. Uh, <laughs> I, I yeah, I have my bits of criticism on that one as well. 
So. It's like, well, like I said, you know, when it's when it's coming from, I mean, you're a street level starch, right? That's right, buddy. And this is a street level band right here. This isn't like some of the other ones we've covered where I've been like hypercritical of that sort of thing. It's like, all right, stop telling me that we got to take it to the streets. You live in a mansion in a high tower on a hill. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you first. Um, <laughs> At least Alyssa Milano has the good sense to be out there among the protests and tell Pete and you know and tell others they shouldn't have they they should forbid uh, they should withhold sex until things change. Good for you, Alyssa Milano. Way to go! <laughs> Way to go! Thank you for coming out of your high tower. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, but seriously, you know, like like sworn enemy, like yeah, that's that that is their shtick. So it's like all right, that's fine. I mean. I, I, it's like I like it when I'm in the mosh pit. I like it when I'm out there being active. When I really stop and think about it, I'm like, huh. okay, yeah. <laughs> so I read a I read a comment. You know, speaking of the mosh pit, I read a comment about a guy who he said he um, he got his nose broke trying to get to the front of a sworn enemy concert, and the only thing that helped him through it was the adrenaline of the set he said he just you know the the whole set was just amazing and then by the end of, by the end of the set he realized how fucked up he was <laughs> i guess he got messed up pretty bad trying to get to the front of this uh front of the crowd but uh i told you anyway. i went to a helmet show years ago and i managed to stay out of the pit for most of the show but then they started in within the meantime and i'm like oh i gotta get in the mid pit for this took one step got punched directly in the eye yep 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 <laughs> I remember that story. I mean, I don't know if you've ever had a black eye before, but it isn't. It isn't just the way that it looks. Like it stung. Ooh. Like it. Like my eye. Like the whole eye socket felt like it was burning. Ooh. Oh man. Yeah, buddy. So, I, hey, just a quick Colton update, by the way. Wife took him to the orthopedic surgeon. Oh uh, yes, yes, your, yeah. yes. Do your son have? Does your son have like a robot hand, or maybe like a gold hand, like <laughs> Jamie Lannister from Game of Thrones? What's going on? He, yeah, they they straight up Luke Skywalker his ass. <laughs> Took the whole thing off. <laughs> you could never tell. Um, so yeah, they actually looked at it. Now what was funny was we took him to the physician's care, which oh my gosh, that is like bargain basement fucking doctoring right there. Oh, it looks okay. <laughs> he should just have to wear the wrap. Hopefully he'll be all right. But you want to follow up with the orthopedic? <laughs> he'll be fine. He'll just never play the piano again. Then we go to the orthopedic, and the orthopedic looks at it, and he's got like, oh, yeah, he's got a – he broke this finger. And he's like – it's one of the – actually, it's one of the bones in the hand. Ugh. And, uh, yeah, I, but all they did was wrap it up. They didn't put him in a cast or anything. They said, kids are resilient. You know, he's good to go. Just uh, keep that wrapped. We'll see you in two weeks. Stop sticking like, your hand indoors. Yeah, let's stop doing that. Let's – I, I gotta, think that's less than well learned. Okay, so we need, I need to follow up with you on this now. Because your your fourteen year old daughter had friends that were her own age, right? In yep. your house, yep. what made them decide to chase the nine year old and no, the five year old around? Figure that backwards. First, it all started with the game of tag. Okay, so it was tag you're it, run through the house, run outside, you know, in in or out, you know Wait, how. I have questions. I just okay. raised my hand. Okay, I'm glad I saw it. Go ahead. <laughs> They're fourteen year old girls. Shouldn't they have been in her room looking at Tiger Beat and doing well, each other's nails? We had this was like an end of the year party, so there was two of Kira's friends that were girls over and I think two boys that were over as well. Really? So you, you got nothing for me on the Tiger Beat? I'm sorry. I I, I, I get I get your late seventies references, Mark. I'm just not following up. Okay. <laughs> I know what your tiger beat shit is, um, but no, they so it, it they were just looking for something to do, so they started playing tag, and then it, it all kind of calmed down. So everything was still calm, you know, kind of calming down. But then they were like, okay, well, we're going to retreat to uh, Kira's room, and of course, Colton. Whenever somebody's over, you know, Colton's going to follow right behind them. And they're like, no, no, you know, you stay out. And they shut the door. And about that, you know, Colton had stuck his hand right. Not, ladies and gentlemen, he stuck his hand where the hinges are. Yes. Okay. Not in the side where the door actually co shuts. In the side where the hinges are. <laughs> so that was even worse. I mean, that's. So this wasn't part of the game necessarily. This was like they had 
tired of the youngins and they were trying to separate themselves yes. and you, and your son yep. got caught in the bear trap. Yep, yep, yep. And I uh, the poor little girl that did it. Kira tried to say I did it and uh, and she was just trying to make it so I wouldn't get pissed off at her friends, but I got a message like I was so pissed. I went downstairs and of course I was messaging you, but I was so pissed I came downstairs and Mindy sends me a message and says, "You know, Cass is crying. She's afraid you're mad at her." And I'm like, <sighs> "Yeah, you should have gone to be like, yeah, like hey, you done, you done fucked up, you bitch." <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand <laughs> the I mean, we had to take him to physician's care. I don't know how much that's going to cost. You should have, have beat, take, you, sh- you should have beat the cost out of that little girl. Oh, no, no. <laughs> and you were right. I mean, I, I, what should have happened is like, okay, everybody go home. But, no, nope, I'm too much of a softie, and I didn't want to ruin everything. Oh, even though dude. <laughs> I can't change. Yeah, trust me. I, I Your children are blessed that you're their father, and it's not me. That's all I'm going to say. Because <laughs> I'd have sacrificed one of those kids to Ra. Um, I don't know why I'm sacrificing kids to an Egyptian god, but well, I would have. You know, if that's about the only thing you could say, if it helps them heal quicker. <laughs> yeah, I had thrown every one of those kids out like a fucking bouncer at a bar. I'm to get out. Yeah. Um. I know. Well, let, let me, me. Well, my kids. My, go ahead. my kids play with the neighbors and. You know, they have a tendency to come in and out of the house for one reason or another. And like, and, I, and I've told them, like, either go outside and play or stay inside and hang out. But stop going in and out of the fucking house. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like, we've had a couple of instances where we've actually let the kids come in. But my, my kids are relatively low-key, especially if um, they're just kind of hanging out by themselves. They use, you know, they can, they're, they're very good about entertaining themselves. Their friends come in, and they're not bad girls necessarily, but they but they're loud and they fight a lot. Yeah, and that fighting kind of mushrooms, you know. It, it, it's like from what I, and and when it's in my house, like I can't like if they're fighting, I you're can't not going to be it. enjoying. You're not going to be able to enjoy anything. All no. you'll be able to hear is that fucking fighting. So no, and they and one of them has a tendency to react to everything. So like if something is out, so they walk in the house, I get a million questions. And they're all dumb. They're like, why is there air? And I'm like, <laughs> Stop acting like a fucking eight-year-old and get out of here. Um, one of them is, I think, ten, by the way. But anyway. Okay. All right. Uh, no. she, she's also on the spectrum. So it's like, I try to be patient. I understand that she's working with a developmental disorder. Um, and, and I have sympathy towards her, and so I try not to lose my shit. On the other hand, it's like I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to watch something or I'm doing something or whatever. It's like, why is there air? What is the color blue? Why is there blue? And I'm like, shut the fuck up. Um, and then she's always fighting with her sister. And again, that bleeds into fighting with Jonas and Lily. And then the other thing is that Jonas has this tendency, like Jonas can be cooperative and go with the flow when he wants to, but then he gets into this mode where it's just like, I'm the king and everyone's got to do things my way. And then there's these three girls going like, fuck you, you know? And so now they're all fighting because they can't agree on what to do. And it's just like, that's it. Everyone get out. Huh. You know, I, I just want to grab, I just want to grab a bunch of random toys, throw them in the yard and kick them all out. Like, go get on out of here. Uh, all right. So for those of you that tune into this show just to hear our our in between song ramblings, you're welcome. Yeah, there you go. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, uh, I've managed to go this far without saying anything uh, racist Ooh. or homophobic today. <laughs> <laughs> it's just boiling and festering until we hit plugs. <laughs> and plugs happen. Be ready, folks. Oh, I'm just Maybe kidding, all the good folks. Stuff till the end. I'm just kidding, folks. I'm totally inclusive. Everybody's welcomed. I love everybody. Yeah, even the people that can't take a joke. Even the people that can't take a joke. Little snowflakes. All right. So this next one, speaking of snowflakes, this is DOA. So lost, it's in the pain. A witness to what I have seen. The king world, the cast of steam. No part of mine with birth and sustain. Lies in the heart of man 
here comes the breakdown. Um, I <laughs> love the punk influence on on this. That's one of the reasons why I I know metalcore amongst a lot of like the elite metalheads of the world. They're like, yeah, mm. Mm. Um, don't put that in here. No, 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 no. Um, you know, but I uh, I enjoy it. You know. I was listening to, I think, punk before I even got into metal, so I I still keep that with me, you know, and I enjoy the punk influence in metal, which is really what, what to me what metalcore is all about. It's that it's that evolution, it's that fusion. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you know when I hear something that's got that old school punk vibe to it, but it's turned up a notch so that it's more metal, I can't help but like it. And you know, and I know for a lot of people, they turn their nose up at that sort of thing. Um, but you know, you go play your hurdy gurdies, it'll be fine. <laughs> hurdy gurdy, flag it or please. Hey, 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 <laughs> don't you be exclusive. Somebody out there's gonna be upset. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> you know, if this, if this, if DOA is punk and in, fuse, then you know how I am about punk. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan. And you're wrong. But, but I'm sorry. I, you like it when like metalheads are doing math and some shit. Whatever the next band we're gonna do is a legion. Yeah, that'll be a legion next week. <laughs> Tune in. Um, They're time traveling in the middle of their songs. Please, oh my gosh, dude! If it was scar symmetry, we would be talking about like fucking quantum leaper and stuff. But nope, nope, nope. It's a legion. That's all right. Um, this next so, song is called Three Point One Four Equals Pi. <laughs> fucking best song of the year. <laughs> <laughs> of the album of the year. Uh, this next song is called Hypotenuse. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, uh, hey, shit, here comes the Pythagorean Theorem. All right, go ahead. Dude, I, one of their songs on their last album was nothing but the fucking scientific method. I mean, they talked about the scientific <laughs> method. That's right. That was the lyrics to some of it. So, Smell anyway. The smart people. Oh, gosh, it's going to be so fun to talk about. Um... DOA, yeah. So anyway, I I like that song. So if if you're infusing punk with metal and that's what we get with DOA, I don't mind. So there you go. And plus, I believe it's you know my notes were you know keep it's keeping up that brutality. We still have, like I said, not even let off the gas. We're halfway through this album, um, and they're they're keeping up. Uh, they got they got a good thing going here, Mark. They do have a good thing going. All right, let's keep it keep it going on. Keep it going on. Uh, the next one is the fragments of a broken life. metal guy think he did not review this one i looked and looked i don't believe he reviewed this one yet send um, him a tweet say hey fucko get on the get, <laughs> get on the stick it's like who is this again <laughs> we're the premier metal podcast on a wednesday night at nine o'clock p.m eastern standard time that's right no one competes. <laughs> copyright laws we'll break them <laughs> no no fear we ain't scared 
So I think Fragments of a Broken Life is maybe the weakest track off of this album for me. Um, while we're, we're still going at it with the brutality and with the hardcore, uh, I just, this one is probably, I guess, probably near the bottom for me when it comes to the rest of the stuff that's on here. It, um, it evokes the vision of a circle pit. Okay, was, you know. the one yeah. thought I had. Here, let me read you this quote. It says, uh, this was from some reviewer, <laughs> Jesse. Why don't, why don't you quote your sources? Well, because I don't want to. Here's a, here's a quote from some fuck. Here we go. <laughs> the pace never feels like it slows as you just want to start a pit wherever you are, stomping and smashing everything in sight. This album should come with a warning. I kind of agree with that. I totally because, agree with that. Yeah, like, you... I mean, uh, Fragments of a Broken Life is not, like, the best song on here, but it definitely evokes a, e evokes the starting of a pit. Yeah, it's happening. It's happening. So, anyway, yeah, my weakest song, my weakest track off the album, in my opinion, is Fragments of a Broken Life, but that doesn't mean it's it's soft. There's no way I'm going to come out of it. I'm not, there's no way in hell I'm going to look this band in the face or even on this podcast behind the safety of a microphone and probably thousands of miles and say that this band is soft because yeah. they are not. They'll drag you out to the handball court and somebody will give you a fisherman suplex. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> nightmares, sir. I have nightmares. Uh, their next album will be Fragments of a Broken Jesse. <laughs> All over the court. <laughs> Stomp his ass. <laughs> to so, the nothing left. So my son was bored tonight. We would, we told, you know, we're letting him stay up a little bit later. It's the end of the school year, so what the fuck. Um yeah. So no, you know, normally we they they have a strict bedtime of seven p.m. because they have to be up at six a.m. Um, you know, and and good little boys and girls got to get their sleep. Actually, if my daughter doesn't get enough sleep, the next day she's a fucking basket case. Like just get you, like uh, Lily, get your pencil out. You know, so like you know, <laughs> you're an emotional fucking disaster if you don't get enough sleep. Um. <laughs> My son, you know, will, will at least lay in the bed quietly. He, but he will, he doesn't fall asleep right away. He, he usually goes about an hour or so before he finally drifts off. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've walked out of his room and he's like riding a pillow and bouncing up and down. He's like, "I'm going to do this all night." And I'm like, "As long as you do it quietly." Um, <laughs> I've been there, but just uh, stay in there. We're good. Yeah. But uh, tonight he was, you know, so we told him, like, you guys can stay up until about 7.30, and then we'll start, the, you know, we'll start our bedtime routine, read him a story and all that. But, uh, you know, get off the TVs. No no TVs right now. No no phones. It's family time. Let's have some family time. And so Jonas, so Jonas and I hit mitts for a little while, and then him and his sister hit mitts. And then he was like, can we go in your bedroom and wrestle? So here's the whole reason I'm telling you this story. Okay. Um, I haven't been feeling great. Lately, like the last couple of days, I just feel really run down, and I don't know if it's just the progression of, of the cancer, or if I just didn't sleep enough, or I'm not sure what my problem is, but I'm feeling a, I'm feeling a little run down, and um, and my back's been hurting. Like we've been doing stuff around the house, and my my you know, and part of it's the weight that I'm carrying around, but um, just my you know, if I if I if I exert myself too much, my my back starts to hurt, and my son has a tendency to want to jump on my back. <laughs> so if oh, I'm, that's not a good combination. <laughs> no, so I'm, t I'm expressly telling him, please, we can wrestle, we can do whatever. I want to I wanna play around. I want to you know, I, I wanna entertain you and make you happy, but please don't jump on my back. This is one thing <laughs> I'm going to... Please don't kick me in the face and don't jump on my ass. I don't jump on my back. I don't think that's a lot to ask of a five-year-old. No, no, I mean, it's clear, you know, hey... So at one point he was like he, he was just like I'm gonna butt slam you and I'm like excuse me he's oh. like yeah I'm gonna jump up and, and and I'm gonna you know land on my butt on you and I'm like Jonas that's that's not a butt slam that's a senton bomb oh boy <laughs> and he was like no it's a butt slam and I'm like oh boy please don't say that out in public a butt slam <laughs> butt slam um which is a bit from Family Guy but uh, I I was trying to teach him like no no no, no senton bomb buddy. And my, I, I, I have found the best way to get my son not to do something is to try to teach him something. Oh, then he's like he <laughs> complete a version of whatever it is. Yeah, okay. like, I don't want you. To, I don't want you to do a thing. I'm going to do it anyway. Let me tell you the history of a thing. I give up. Oh boy, <laughs> if we got to dad, I'll, I'll, I promise I won't do anything else. 
So that's my that's my son for you. <laughs> nice. Butt slam. Ugh. The butt slam. I had to tell him. I had to educate him. Well. No butt slamming. At least not at your age. <laughs> you want to do that when you're 18? God bless you. Go, yeah. fi- go yeah. find love wherever it may lie. Find a butt, slam it all to hell. <laughs> That's right. I kind of I kind of subscribe to the Jim Jeffries uh, philosophy of when you are old enough to pursue love in a relationship, you you put your dick in whatever it is you want to put your dick in. That's <laughs> fine. I don't care. I, we're inclusive here in the Rattledge home, but you're five, so we're not there yet. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm glad you had that discussion with him. <laughs> Well, we haven't had the discussion. Okay, all right, good. That's good. That's good. Um, my wife and I have, though. In all seriousness, my wife and I have like kind of, you know, it's just you know, I don't. As a married couple, when you have kids, sometimes you just kind of drift and you think about like, what if this, what if that, and it's an, look, it's entirely possible one or one or two of our kids might someday discover that uh, that they're gay, and it's like, well, okay, well, what happens? And I'm like, nothing happens. We go on with life. I'm not going to be the guy that destroys the relationship with my kid because of that. There's no yeah, reason to. I, I was going to say there's plenty of people I know that had to experience the fact that, you know, they were pretty much disowned because of a life choice like that. And there's no fucking way I'd do anything like that to my no, kids. Never, no way. never in a million years. It's one of the it's one of the, like the leading causes of suicide in like teenagers is that, you know, is that uh, they get rejected by their home for one reason or another, whether they're trans or gay. And um, the one guy listening to this podcast right now that likes the fact that, you know, that we, like, use, you know, harsh language and make fun of things is going, <laughs> what happened to this podcast? <laughs> These fucking guys. <laughs> Didn't, aren't you the guy that called Pearl Jam a bunch of fags? What, what happened? <laughs> this is a very confused fan base that we're going to have. But no, um, but you know, see, there's jokes and then there's serious, and the seriousness is, there's nothing, there's nothing that would make me risk the relationship I have with my kids, you know, where that stuff's concerned. You Dude, know, my, it, my, it, go ahead. I, I was gonna say, my son, my nine year old, asked me a few days back. He says, "What if I am?" And I, I was like, "Well, I, I don't." I, that's when you get into things like, "Okay, is he old enough to make a decision like that?" And not that I'm, uh, let's see. Uh, not that I'm trying to sway him one way or the other. Right. It's it's more along the lines of like, okay, you're nine. Is this typical? Because at nine year old, at nine years old, man, I certainly was not even thinking about shit like that. I don't know. I had a thing for girls when I was in elementary school. Um, I, I I've always liked girls. I am way way hetero. Um. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm so hetero. <laughs> um, but no, I, I knew I liked girls even back then. But uh, but you know there were but that's kind of what what a lot of people will talk about. You know when they say, you know when did you know you were gay? Like you you knew in elementary school whether you okay. know whether you were willing to acknowledge it or not. I mean, and, and it's hard because you know the other side of that is, um, and we've talked about this with like having daughters is. You know, girls are, are very loving and affectionate with one another. That doesn't necessarily mean they're gay. You know, they'll my, grow up to be gay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, trust me. I've seen it a lot with my daughter. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you, you're you like, whoa, wait a second. But then you're like, okay, well, they're just, you know, that's how they express mm-hmm. affection to each other. But, yeah, at nine years old, dude, I was worried if I was going to get a Nintendo for my birthday. That was my main concern. <laughs> so... <laughs> I understand. understand. And I did get it for my 10th birthday. I got me a Nintendo, damn it. Uh, So, yeah, things are different for everybody, but uh, hardcore, motherfucker. Rhymes galore, like I said before. All right. (laughs) Back to this album. (laughs) All right. Speaking speaking of homosexuals, here's the fall of modern man. Oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) What a dick. Behind the eight ball, you can't stay. 
looking for salvation and that's your damnation. I feel like they were just looking for a rhyme, but it wasn't time. <laughs> so I think I figured out what I like most about this band and, and the album. Um, at first, I remember listening to this song going, oh, okay, well, uh, all right. But then when the chugging starts on the guitar, mm-hmm. uh, that's when I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, here we go. This is this is what I came to hear. Uh, so they they do a lot of that throughout all the songs. Uh, so what turns out to be a song that I wasn't too excited about turns into one of my, you know, one of the better ones I like off this album. Um, I follow Modern Man. So, yeah, I was back into it here after Fragments of a Broken Life where I was like, oh, are we on a downturn of some of the crappier songs? But uh, Fall of Modern Man brought me right back up to it. We're we're still heavy. We're still hardcore, Mark Radlich. Hardcore. Uh, if you're playing the drinking game, you're probably dying of alcohol poisoning right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> drink every time they say hardcore. I don't want to. Um, don't do it. Your, your liver will hate you in the morning. All right. Uh, let's move on here. Uh, this next one is called Selling a Dream. We see it every day. The violence, the hatred, the rage. What we need to do is turn that negativity into positivity. We gotta believe that we can make a change. We need to be a part of it. Time to set things in motion and not let anything steer us off course. Guess what? We've already lost. The town is empty. The bottom of the machine. You take for granted everything that I say. Corrosion from the start, affecting us all. These motherfuckers set us up for a fall. Much too gay, but even so much more to lose. The world around us is our living crew Just keep believing what it is that you believe You're the facts, we're the ones being deceived We're the ones being deceived All right yeah, that was one I was thinking about before where uh, he has to do his little speech in the beginning and it's like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> Turn his negativity into some positivity, Mark Rowley. Oh, is that what we have to do? <laughs> oh, I've been turning my negativity into sandwiches. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're hungry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I know who has done that. A lot, Ace Romero. Has turned a lot of negativity into sandwiches. Uh, yes, and he's eaten a lot of sandwiches. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it just feels kind of like an outlier. But what you've said earlier was that you know hardcore seems to be usually pushing the positivity message. Yeah, and this album is filled with a lot of <laughs> they talk about. We see the hate. We see the violence. Do you see your album? <laughs> because there's a lot of that on here, uh, specifically punching a motherfucker if he doesn't step back. Okay, yeah. you know, so be one or the other. Um, if you <laughs> if stay you the want... fuck back before you get knocked out, but damn it, do it positively. <laughs> stay the fuck back, or I'm gonna give you a flower. Uh, it <laughs> uh, doesn't work, does it? Doesn't work. Stay the fuck back before I give you a hug. <laughs> My brother. Pat you on the back and tell you a good job. Uh, so, I fucked your mother. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting mixed signals here. I don't know what to believe. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I had uh, I had listed here that uh, you know most I think a lot of what the song's about is about you know not letting the not letting the world distort your beliefs and uh, <laughs> save the dream, save the rebellion. Oh boy, <laughs> it's just yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, it was okay, but and again, it's a song that 
they are it's still it's still hardcore style it's still pedal to the metal so i i'm not completely taken out but i can tell you that that first speech right at the beginning does not need to be there no. so i think we're gonna medley these last two this is the consequence and integrity defined strength uh, I think I think at this point we we've said all we're going to say about this album. So let's hear these last two songs real quick, and give our final word. And let's get the fuck out of here before we get fuck knocked out. <laughs> all right, then. What do let's you go. think about that, Jack? That sounds great. Hit hit it, Johnny. That's where I went. <laughs> That's uh, exactly where I want. Oh, sick I minds to think alike. Yeah, yeah. I was like, he just <laughs> gotta go to the bathroom now. <laughs> I shit my pants. Dan it to Dan it to Dan. <laughs> yep. Yes, sir. All right. Um, this was a solid, uh, solid B for me. I mean, it's fine. It's hardcore rhymes galore, like I said before, and I did. Um, you know, it's everything I want in, in an album, but it's a little limited. It's a little in the box. Um, 
you know, it's it's kind of it's there for when you want that aggression, you want that aggressive music. Um, but the, it's it's not spectacular. Okay, all right. Well, uh, just real quick in regards to the consequence, I wrote down two reviews here. I'll just read two sentences, uh, both from two different reviewers. You'd like to know who they are? Too bad. Um, <laughs> so, so listen to this shit. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Uh, it says, by the time the group reach the the consequence, they enter full-blown festival core territory. <laughs> Woes, haze, and more Rob Flynn bullshit throughout. So, uh, I mean, I caught the woes and haze. It didn't put me off, but uh, I didn't know that was indicative of Rob Fl- Rob Flynn in any way. Um, now, the other review said, things don't get interesting again until the consequence. The second to last song of the set. The introspective lyrics mix well with the best drumming on the record, wailing guitar solos, and crunching rips. So there's two separate reviewers who had two separate uh, takes on that song. Uh, you you decide which which one. Which one. Um now, integ- integrity to find strength, which, okay, at, at first I was trying to figure out what the hell was going on here because they chant IDS, but then we find out that means instant death squad. Now, here's the thing. Uh, integrity to find strength, which is the name of that song, was the title of their album from 2001. And then, of course, as you listen to it, you think you're being swerved because IDS stands for instant death squad. However... Instant Death Squad is apparently a cover of an older song that they did uh, from an album back in 1999 called Negative Outlook. So that last song was just like, I don't know, there's references all over the place to their own work. So what uh, you're so, saying is the CAA knew that the FBI was setting them up? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, the IDS came a-calling. And then the, <laughs> and then the IBS <laughs> made the people start running. <laughs> It was pretty crazy. Uh, but anyway, all right, final final thoughts. That 37 minutes sworn enemy is like a brutal beat down that is over swiftly and violently. They do not overstay their welcome, and I believe that's a very good thing. Uh, the album is far from boring, and once I find the spreadsheet, I believe this is going to go into the top 10 for the year. So once I find the spreadsheet, Mark, <laughs> I might have to redo this spreadsheet I, I keep talking about. But you might, have, uh, but, you might have to go back and listen to all those. Uh, all those. Yeah. Fast forward right to the end. We'll get yeah. some. Well, at least we'll get some extra listens. There you, you know, go. All up to four thousand. We already got in like one day. Like, why do I have a thousand listens today? Oh, that's Jesse. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> so yeah, I had it, man. I had a good time with this album. I'm really, I'm yeah. really surprised, and I liked it. I mean, I think it is one of the better ones. We didn't have tonight. We didn't have a whole lot of negativity to say about this album. So no, no it's fine. It's, it's there. It's aggressive. It's hardcore. Do you want more? I think we managed to get through this entire podcast without insulting most people. Well, yeah, this is one podcast in the week. We got <laughs> at least four other podcasts. That's true. <clears throat> so, uh, there, there's your opportunity to be offended. Just find, you know, I'm sure something was said about ethnicity on Aladdin. Had to have been. <laughs> I was trying so hard, man. I was. <laughs> I was, I've no, I don't, I, other than when Alexis and I talk about She-Ra, I don't think I've danced, I, I don't think I've been so careful not to step on, uh, step on eggs, as eggshells as it was. Yep, yep. <laughs> no, know, that's good. I was, I was being very inclusive, very woke. Very uh, good, very good to you. Turn <laughs> a new leaf for I'm a bright. Tr- yeah, I'm trying, man. Um, <laughs> not, not, not very hard, but I'm trying. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so as he as he mentioned there, we covered Aladdin this week on Damn You Hollywood. You got a double dose of shows on Monday, which was Memorial Day. Uh, we did the uh, Long Road to Ruin for John Wick, which was supposed to be done the previous Thursday, but chain up, Sean. Um, Jesse put up his Blood Ties show or Bloodlines or whatever you like. Um, speaking of Ace Romero, that fat fuck. We. Uh, <laughs> oh boy um, We reviewed AEW Double or Nothing And we discovered that anytime a wrestler falls down Joey, N- Joey Janela hurts his head um, <laughs> We uh, reviewed the entire series of Game of Thrones So go ahead and check that out Tomorrow uh, we're going to do a TV party For Extremely Wicked, Shockingly Evil and Vile Which is the Zac Efron movie about Ted Bundy That's on Netflix 
Um, possibly tomorrow night, uh, Alexis and I will be doing a commentary for Godzilla 1998. Jesse, you're going to join us? I'm going to try. If I can't, uh, I, I, man, I really do want to talk about that movie, but who knows what holds, uh, you know, what, what fate holds in its hands for mon- uh, Friday. It said Friday, right? Uh, listen, you, 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 if you, I think what you need to tell the missus is that Thursday belongs to her, but the rest of the weekend belongs to me. That's, that's can you, how can, it goes. Can you do that for me? I don't <laughs> think it's going to go so well if I say it. I'll talk to your wife. You talk to my wife. How's that sound? <laughs> Your wife seems so much more laid back and used to you being like at, at your fucking computer, uh, usually four or five nights a week. Mine, though, oh boy. She, um, I mean, she likes it. I mean, I think that there's been like a, the there's the occasional time when she's like, eh, I don't feel like we're really connecting, you know, you know, for one reason or another. And I'm like, I don't know. Wake up every once in a while. Uh, how about we do a podcast about it, baby? Yeah, exactly. She she's not about it. Uh, she's not bowdy bowdy and rowdy rowdy. Like I like. Oh her no, oh, fuck. Um. <laughs> But nine out of ten times, though, she would much rather me be doing a podcast because that means she can go to bed. Like, she, you know, like the obligation to spend time with me just just, just isn't there. Mm. So so she's off the hook, and she can do her favorite hobby, which is sleeping. All right. All right. <laughs> so, That's a good hobby to have. Um, but like I said, there's that one out of ten times where she's just like, oh, we should spend more time together. And I'm like, I don't know. You should be awake. <laughs> Good point. Um, Good point. Yeah, I'll try to make it, man. I'll, I'll try my best there. Uh, I'll let you guys know there Friday for sure. And Saturday night, uh, the day before my birthday, myself, Patrick Mullen, and Robert Winfrey will be getting on the zone to uh, do alternative commentary for Anthony Joshua versus Andrew Ruiz Jr. Andy Williams. No, Andy Ruiz Jr. Okay. <laughs> And then, myself, Jesse Starcher, uh, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, and Chris Sheehan, maybe, kind of, sort of, could be. Possible. Be, possible. We'll be uh, reviewing NXT TakeOver from Bridgeport, Connecticut. At TakeOver 25. And Jesse will, lo- will know that NXT is far superior to AEW. So there. <laughs> All then, right, then. It's, oh no, there goes Tokyo, go, go, Godzilla, Kingdom of Monsters on source material this Monday, 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 Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey. Um, (laughs) And then on Tuesday, we'll be doing a damn you Hollywood for Godzilla, King of Monsters. I'll have a report for how my kids did with it. See how many times they peed themselves, grabbed my arm, turned away, shit the bed, whatever it is they do. And then. (laughs) Oh boy. My and son then, shit himself. What happened? He watched Godzilla. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Mothra, Mothra came up. He hooped his pants. Um, <laughs> but I wasn't leaving the movie, so he just sat in that shit. Literally. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and then on Wednesday, we'll be back here. Jesse got, Jesse got to pick one album this year, and this is it. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Cannot uh, wait to talk about it either. A Legion. Apoptosis, which is Greek for let's do math and metal at the same time. Mm. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. And then finally, 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 Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why? Who is this Chris guy again? We've had him on two podcasts. Everybody knows his name now. So he's never been on the Metal Hammer of Doom either. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> your guest is as good as ours. <laughs> we'll be doing an on trial for the 1998 Godzilla. Go, and, go, Godzilla. Go, 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 Godzilla. Um, and then uh, that's it. We'll take a break for a couple of days. You know what I'm doing on June 9th? What is that? Celebrating? No, I'm, my birthday is June 2nd. Oh um, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna podcast on my birthday because you know. No, uh, I don't understand podcast. Yeah, you know what? I'm only 43, and like Pat Oswalt says, after a certain age, you should only celebrate the tens. So I shouldn't yeah, be even celebrating a birthday until I turn fifty. Your Wait, birthday just don't mean shit anymore. That's right. That's right. You know what? I, you know what I asked for for my birthday? To be left alone. That's no. a good one. Try um, that one on. Um, I, it, you know, I really wanted to do a cancer joke there, but I'm just like, I've, maybe I've beaten that into the ground. Maybe, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> maybe I've caught past the point of sympathy into, hey, you're kind of a dick. Um, <laughs> so I'll put that joke back on the shelf for now. I'll, I'll get it later. Um, no, uh, you know what I asked for for my birthday? I don't know if you know this reference or not. 
Probably not. You're from, like, Russia or something. <laughs> um, I want a Brock Party t-shirt. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I've been paying attention to our DM <laughs> there on Twitter, so... <laughs> yeah, I know what a Brock Party is. I need a Brock Party t-shirt. Boombox Brock. That's right. Oh, it's the best thing ever. My I've w- seen memes. I've seen videos. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Dude, my wife was so funny. She's like, if I if you weren't sitting next to me, I would have sworn that was you next to Brock on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Playing the guitar? Yes. Brock looks over and says, no, cut it out. You look like an idiot. <laughs> hey, cut that shit out. Only I may dance. And suddenly Brock Lesnar is Conan O'Brien. Um, <laughs> anyway, June 9th. Uh, Megadeth and Ozzy got postponed till 2020. But goddamn. Goddamn, Jesse. Damn. I'm going to see Hootie and the fucking Blowfish. Oh, jeez. That's a step up, isn't it? Let her oh, cry. Oh. God damn it. Vince, I got these rats. <laughs> Wait a second, you got to explain that to me. No, nah, I'm all over the place right now. I'm just, okay, I'm just... it, Vince, I've got these rats. I assume that's wrestling. Wasn't it you who I was talking to about? Uh... Oh no, that was Winfrey who brought up the Stone Cold pod. Oh, okay, you don't you don't know this. So Stone Cold had, uh, has a podcast, and for a while, all he talked about were the rats in his garage. Oh jeez. So, so there was a lot of us on the internet doing Stone Cold impressions of Vince, I got these rats. <laughs> Is he trying to get Vince to like pay for an exterminator or something? It was a long story. Uh, uh, apparently. Just, just, just know that that became kind of a meme in, in and of itself is, is Steve Austin and his rats. All right. <laughs> I rats. will remember that. The rats in the garage. <laughs> Any other plugs here? <laughs> no, I'm done. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, go give the Rattelich in Broadcasting Network Facebook page a like to stay up on top of all the great podcasts that we have to offer. All sorts of great topics that are talked about. Uh, you just heard a bevy of them right there. We talk comics. We talk wrestling. We talk TV. We talk movies. Uh, we talk metal. So there's probably something out there that you may want to check out. Go check out the Therapy Podcast. While you're at it, go check out the Judgment Night Podcast. <laughs> they, apparently the two are related. So, um, and only minorly offensive. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But now, you know, go. You can either subscribe, which we'd love for you to do, get these shows right into the old podcast player uh, automatically, or you can just go find an individual show. Either way, we appreciate you listening. Uh, we're on podcast platforms such as iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio. We're on right Podcoin. Go Podcoin. Ch- Go, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you used to. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead and delete the program that you listen to podcasts on on your phone and download PodCoin and resubscribe to the network. They will pay you to listen to this horse shit. That's right. That is right. You will get paid to listen to podcasts. So I don't know why. I have no idea why. You continue to use any other podcast player. But if you do, hey, you can find us just as easily. But uh, other than that, Mark Radlich, I'm ready to – I know you got the CPAP calling. Uh, me, I've got I've got the old Betty by a calling. So let's get the hell out of here, man. All right. Thank you for joining us here on this nonsense. Be well, be safe, and behave. Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Get to Old Navy's Best of Summer Sale now for the best summer styles at the best prices. Get $2 flip-flops, $4 tanks, $6 tees, and $8 dresses and shorts for the whole family. Summer styles are just 2 4 6 and 8 bucks. $2 flip-flops, $4 tanks, $6 tees, and $8 dresses and shorts. Can't wait to wear it? Buy online and pick up in-store for free. End soon at Old Navy and OldNavy.com. Valid 610 to 618. Excludes gift cards. Today only in 
and two-day only deals, store clearance, register lane items, and jewelry.